What's going on, everybody? It's your boy E. Glaze of the Crush Sports Talk. Hey, man, it's Super Bowl 53 week, and we right here inside the Rams Hotel. And, man, when I tell you I got one of the hottest celebrity people, chefs, whatever, and Jannard Wells here with me, we about to talk a little bit, man, right now, man. Jannard, thank you so much for coming. Man, man. it's always a pleasure, guys. Man, thank y'all for joining in. Man, thank you for having me, man. I love rapping with great people. So, just, first of all, every time I look you on somebody's show, you was on the Today Show recently yeah. to this morning? Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday morning, yeah, flew out to New York and did the Today Show, man. Have you gotten used to that? You know what? I, as they say, I still feel the butterflies every time I, I land on somebody's TV show. And, and, and the thing is, I've been doing it for over 10 years. I guess that just lets us know that we're still human. Yeah. But for the most part, man, it still feels good, you know, because I keep setting goals for myself that I'm proud to knock off the list. I mean, you know, talking about gold, you've been saying you've been doing this for 10 years. What has been some of the things that you've looked at and said, I can't believe I did it? Do you even say that word, I can't believe I've done it? <laughs> you just do now and it yeah. just happens. No, man, I actually, I, I still say that uh, because I try to put put some tough things to achieve on there. But, but the key is everything that I put on there to achieve, I achieve it. And the journey is always different than what I the way I plan it to happen in my mind. So that's the one thing that truly amazes me every time I achieve a new goal or something that I want to do that I feel is outstanding to me in life is it just amazes me the route that I end up going. You know, because we all set different goals and have outlooks in life and what we want. But then we turn around and we envision how it should come to us. But it never comes that way. It'll come, but your eyes got to be open enough to see it. And that's what that's what I learned a long time ago was when I set goals and things that I want to achieve, whether it's in TV, entertainment, business-wise, I always try to block out how it's going to come. Because that's a big mistake that we, we make a lot is we set goals and then we try to determine how we're going to get whatever it is that we're asking for. And then when it don't come the way that you planned it should come, guess what you do? You reject it because it didn't come the way you planned it. But <laughs> but it was right there. And that's what I learned, man, just to be open with it. Who's been more, you talk about you accepting what happened, but how has your family accepted all of this, what's been going on? Oh, man, my, my family is really accepting it. To some of them, it still seems kind of surreal. But for the, man, the, the, the most part, me having a big family, I wanted them to take this journey with me in life because what I always learned was when I first started off, I'll be going up doing these different things and then I would come back and I would share it with my family. And they looking like, why? And I'm like, I, my words can't really explain it, how exciting this was, how amazing it was. So I made it up in my mind. Everything that I did, whether it was friends, family, somebody was going to always be on this journey with me so that they can experience from themselves. Because when you let other people experience your experience, they have a different way of telling your story than you tell your story. True. Now let's just, be, now I heard about your big family. <laughs> tell people when you say big family, what's big yeah. family? Man, me alone, me and my wife, we have nine kids. We got five girls and four boys, man. Yeah, we, we got our own team at the house. <laughs> so, and a bench. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure, we got cheerleaders all of it. And, and the thing is, it, it's so cool. Now, I came from a big family myself. My father had 32 sisters and brothers, man. <laughs> 32. <laughs> God. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> oh, right. Talk about being fruitful and multiplied. <laughs> yeah. At that spot. Yeah. So, when did it happen? When did the, the magic happen? I know everybody asks you the same question. When did you want to be a chef? But when did yeah. you know you were really great at what you're doing, being, a, being at the point that you're a celebrity chef? Yeah. When, when I truly knew it, was the moment that the premier first lady of Bermuda sought out to me to fly me in for this event that they did called the Bermuda International Love Festival. They bring all these Canadian diplomats, all these people of, of great stature over to Bermuda doing Valentine's Day to be exact. And they would, they would highlight them and, and just have an amazing time. And when they sought me to be the, the featured chef, that meant a lot that another country not only saw what I was doing, but thought enough, that kind of rawness would, would seek out me to come over and, and share it in an experience. Wow, wow. And I mean, they laid it out. Wow. Yeah, it was very nice. That's, that's wow. 
So, you know, with your career, you wrote books, you wrote three cookbooks, if I'm not mistaken. No, I, I've actually written, oh man, I believe five cookbooks. Five? Yeah, five cookbooks. I own my own publishing company also. Oh, that's what's yeah, Jannard Wells Publishing. And, and, you know, and those are things that I've always one of those people that I feel that if you're doing something, you should try to learn as much as you can about that business that maybe you can go into it. So I started off with, I started off first self-publishing, which did very well because I marketed and I was able to land and get on Barnes and Noble to actually store shelves all nine. Then that picked up enough steam where an actual publishing company seek me out to want to publish my book. And after seeing the self-publishing route and the, and the publisher route, I learned that I could start my own company, my own business, control my own royalties, own 100% of my books, and put out books whenever I want. Because I had so many recipes that I del delivered, or created over my lifetime, they wanted to control when I would put them out, and I wanted to just share it with the world. And so that's what led me into launching my own publishing company. And outside of cookbooks, I even wrote a relationship book. It's called Roadmap, A Woman's Guide to a Good Man. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, about exactly, that. yeah. How was that received? Man, at first I received a lot of flack off of it. <laughs> but like I told, the women at first, when they saw it, they thought I was trying to tell the story about women. I am not a woman, so I was not trying to tell this story. What I was doing was sharing how men are. And by sharing how men are, what I explained to them was, I can tell you how we are, our flaws and all, and what we have, because there's several different characteristics with a man, and what that does for you as a woman, it helps you better determine what kind of man you want to be with, because there's somebody for everybody. But why waste time on trying to figure out, do I want this? And later on, find out six months down the road, he had all these different traits about him that you didn't like or you didn't want. You could have been out, weeding that out on the front end. And then for the men, the men with men, like I'm sharing the secrets, like I got several, 14 chapters, I break down several different men. The mama's boy, the egotistical man, the jealous man, the cheat man. Well, you try to tell all of them about that, right? Yeah, but this is the thing. I make it easy for the men, cause guess what? If a lady read this book, it's somebody for everybody. It's always a woman gonna accept the man that, hey, that's a mama, but it's always gonna accept one that's a cheater. Some women look for them. So guess what, for the man, you ain't even gotta lie about who you are no more. You can be straight up with who you are it's because she can, exactly, because she gonna accept you for who you are. And you know, you talk about, what do you got going on around here at Super Bowl 53, sir? You down here in the <laughs> Man, I, um, I actually just finished doing a, uh, a 153 mark, uh, satellite media tour for Gordon Cheese. You know, one of the things is going into the Super Bowl, everybody looking to make dips and stuff like that. So I, I banged out several different res recipes um, and we went out to our, over 150 some markets. Um, and what I was doing was showing people from LA, New York, no matter where you are, how you could take and put a spin on it, like your traditional jalapeno popper that's stuffed with cheese. Yeah. What I did was I took it and took the, the pulled pork or pulled chicken, stuff it in a jalapeno popper, the barbecue, then the cheese. So you get different, taking things, as I call it, southern modified cooking. Take things that we're traditionally looking for and add our own unique spin to them to get an extra kick out of it. Overall, what have been some of the biggest lessons you've learned through this process? <laughs> The, the, one of the biggest lessons that I've learned, and, I'm, and I meant to always try to teach myself regardless of how much success I get, money, anything, it's really humbleness is the key. You know, humbleness is the key, and I say that is because we should always be grateful for what we do. Because when we're in this field, this is an art. And when I say art, artists thrive off of other people giving them the gratitude, really appreciation and valuing what they do. The moment you lose that humbleness, then you lose the reason, the true reason why that you're doing what you're doing and you feel that, hey, I, I, I'm the man, I'm this. Regardless of how many accolades that I, that I achieve, several things I always remind myself. There's a younger generation that's coming behind me that's gonna do even greater and I want them to do greater. And then I have a lot of counterparts that's in my same field that are doing great things as well. And I figure by keeping that, it keeps me grounded. And at the same time, it always keeps me grounded to achieve more. Wow. I know you get asked this a lot, and we got a few more questions for you. What do you try to tell the, the, the young chef, the, 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 the next Janard? What do you tell them to try to get them to understand that about the passion of what you do and doing it the right way? You know, the biggest thing that I tell them is endurance. 
Endurance, that one word, is really key to what we do in this field. You have to have endurance, meaning not going to happen overnight. A lot of people think that, hey, what I've been doing, oh, it just happened overnight. They don't realize I've been a chef for over 20-some years, man, and it's really just starting to take off. A lot of people look at it and they say, oh, man, it just happened overnight. But they don't even realize how long it took for it to get to just this point to start receiving the fruits of our labor. And I always explain to them, you know what the endurance is? When you look at anybody's tombstone, you're gonna see three things on their tombstone. The day they were born, the dash, and the day they passed away. The day they were born, that's significant. The day they passed away is significant. But what means the most is the dash in between. That determines your character as a man or a woman and what all you endured and what you went through to achieve whatever it is that you achieved. So that's what I always tell them. Truly keep up the endurance and the passion and remind yourself why you got into this field. Uh, so before you go, Super Bowl prediction, sir? Ah, <laughs> man. Man, honestly, real talk, I'm, I'm going, I'm going for, the, for the underdog. I'm going for the Rams, man. I'm, I'm, I'm truly going for the Rams for the simple fact, you know, they coming all the way here to the south of L.A. and somebody needs to dethrone them other guys, man. Somebody got to do it. Somebody got to put a stop to it. We can't have them come to the ATL and win on our territory. Yeah, I'm right. Exactly. I'd rather have the West Coast come here and win on the East Coast. Tell people where they can find out all about what you got going on, man. Man, you can find out everything I got going on on all social media handles at Chef Gennard, C-H-E-F-J-E-R-N-A-R-D, or online, www.chefgennard.com. Thank you, sir. Man, thank Appreciate you. Time, man. I enjoyed it. Hey, this man got nine kids. He got to get some work done. Hey, <laughs> and you already know, I'll be cooking the rest of my life, man. <laughs> thank you, sir. All right, thank you.